As Taylor mentioned, I am Jenna Siegel. I am an acting urban agriculture lead at the Farm Service Agency. Um, so today I'm going to talk to you about FSA's resources for urban producers, but also highlight the work that we're doing across FPAC, um, which involves NRCS and the Office of Urban Agriculture and Innovative Production. And just really talk about the urban agriculture initiative as a whole, FSA's engagement in the initiative, and how we're supporting urban farmers. I'll also be touching on a lot of the things that um, that Rick mentioned just now in terms of how we what resources we have for urban farmers and it's it's really really similar um, there's so much overlap in in the work in the resources we have for beginning and urban farmers but I will walk us through that today all right let me of course, I have the delayed. There we go. So um, again, just talking a little bit about what urban agriculture is and what USDA's stance is on urban farmers as a whole. Then I'll be sharing some information about the Office of Urban Agriculture and Innovative Production and how our FSA collaborates with them. And then I'll be talking about the Urban County Committee pilot and sharing the resources that we have at FSA and at USDA as a whole for urban farmers. So again, when it comes to agriculture um, at FSA, we don't define it by the farm size or the location of your farm. Um, it's the nation's food and fiber. It's what what we grow. It's it's farming for people. It's having an impact. And there is an obvious and very clear growing number of urban farmers and a need to create resources and tools for our urban farmers. And USDA is committed across the agency to understanding the needs of urban producers, investing in our urban farmers, and supporting those needs of urban agriculture producers. So again, I know that many of you are familiar with what urban farming is, um, but urban farmers are unique. They are non-traditional. It's a different clientele than FSA has worked with in the past in many circumstances, but we continue and have always worked with urban farmers when, they, when they're eligible for our programs. Um, urban farming looks different. Uh, it can be on rooftops and containers. It also could be traditional field agriculture. It just really depends. Um, also, a lot of urban farmers have a smaller footprint, and that's something to be aware of as a whole, too. So another thing that's really unique about urban farmers is that many of them are have a socially motivated mindset, are working to increase food equity, and focus on food sovereignty as well. So that's just something that is that we, we know, but we're also learning as we have more and more conversations with our urban producers and we're committed to supporting them even more. Um, just as Rick mentioned in terms of our beginning farmers, urban farmers are important. Urban agriculture beautifies urban areas, helps with environmental sustainability, reduces runoff, um, beautifies neighbors and neighborhoods, and increases access to fresh, healthy foods in areas where grocery stores or local foods may be sparse. Um, so it's just really important that we know that urban farmers are having such a big impact on feeding their communities. And that's just one of the main reasons and a great reason why USDA is investing resources to support our urban producers, not only to help their businesses grow, but to help help feed people in urban areas. Again, as, as Rick mentioned, um, USDA and FSA specifically has our own definitions of what a beginning and urban farmer are, um, or beginning and socially disadvantaged farmer, I should say. Um, but it's really relevant because our urban farmers are beginning farmers. Um, they, they are unique. We are serving these groups because they are a unique audience. And we know that investing in urban areas and urban producers helps support beginning farmers. <laughs> I apologize. My dogs heard me speak and just woke up from their from their nap. So I may have to pause for a moment if it, if it gets too out of hand. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about the Office of Urban Agriculture and Innovative Production and what their role is at USDA and how we're collaborating with them at FSA. So the 2018 Farm Bill established and re required that USDA stands up this new Office of Urban Agriculture and Innovative Production, also known as the OUAIP. Um, they work across any USDA agency that is supporting urban farmers and is really has actually been charged with helping FSA to establish ur the Urban County Committee pilot. So again, they have a federal, they have a lot of work that they're doing to advance urban agriculture as a whole. Uh, they support the FSA Urban County Committee pilot. They have competitive grants that help reduce waste, food waste in urban areas and really support um, 
food waste reduction and support urban farmers as a whole. And they also have a federal advisory committee. Uh, we rarely realize that we need we need farmers that are out in the field to help advise USDA and make sure that the programs that we have are relevant to all producers, are equitable, and in particularly getting making sure that we have the voices of their perspectives that we're developing new programs and resources that meet the needs of our urban farmers. Excuse me again. I have two, I have two dogs and one hand is on each of them right now. So again, apologize here. Um, so again, OUAIP really seeks to support pr and promote urban, indoor, and other emerging agricultural practices. Um, so there, we recognize that there's community gardens, like I said, and urban and urban settings, um, all those different types of agriculture practices I mentioned before. So hydroponic, aquaponic farming, that's all innovative, happening not only in urban, but in peri-urban areas as well. And really the office is seeking to identify those and, and support those initiatives and those types of farming. So across the board, OUAP is doing, doing a lot. Um, and again, like I said, we're really gonna focus on today, their role in the urban county committees. Um, so traditional county committees have been around for nearly 100 years and have provided a direct link between the farming community and USDA. Um, we're on the ground in counties across the country and really allowed for grassroots input and local administration of USDA programs. Uh, every year, USDA and Farm Service Agency has local elections where farmers are nominated to serve in those county committees. and. Um, members are elected by their peers every in the fall of every of every year. So the county committee pilot builds on that structure, but really focuses again in these new urban areas. So making sure that we have representation from urban farmers in those county committees and it's a it's happening across the country. Um, as you can see, we're, we're currently in phase two, but we are entering rapidly into phase three of the pilot. Um, You'll see phase one had a few states that joined, and then phase two is when Arizona um, came on board there. And again, as we develop this pilot, we're really listening to our urban county committee members, identifying more resources that they may need to learn about USDA programs as a whole and, and learning about the needs of our, of our farming communities and urban areas. What type of resources do they want from USDA? How can we better serve them? And we're looking at that information, having those conversations and making recommendations to the administrator and um, to, to Congress. We do an annual report on the county committee as well, highlighting challenges or recommendations or um, opportunities for improvement in the pilot as well. Um, so similar to the traditional county committees, um, there's have all the same requirements and, and roles, but urban county committees are really distinct because of the reasons I mentioned before. Um, they're in an urban area and a lot of urban producers may not have worked with USDA in the past, so they can help do outreach to local stakeholders who can promote all the USDA programs that um, that they're eligible to and local so they can help do outreach to different farmers and connect them to USDA. Um, just like Rick said, uh, USDA is not always going to handhold our farmers when applying to our programs, but our stakeholders and partner agencies can can really help and they're there to help walk you through some of those some of those application hurdles and, and be that support and many of our stakeholders receive cooperative agreements directly from FSA or USDA to help our producers and help them navigate um, the complicated system that does exist when trying to apply to some of these programs. Again, urban county committees also help are supposed to be stewards and understand our programs so they can they can help those urban producers. And as I mentioned before, making recommendations to on training needs or to FSA as a whole about um, how we could better support our urban farmers. Another thing that we are doing through the urban um, county committee pilot is in collaboration with the Office of Urban Ag and Innovative Production, we are in all the urban county committee locations, we are establishing urban service centers. So we are in the process of engaging with all of state leadership to identify the best place and the best way to have this 
physical presence so that um, we have the physical presence in our counties across the country, but making sure that urban farmers know where to go and can speak to uh, a member from USDA can help them get a farm number, um, apply to different loans or engage in our other programs that require um, require FSA's assistance. So this is a opportunity where FSA and NRCS in all of our in all of these urban service areas will be together and can onboard urban farmers and help you con help connect to the right programs that meets your needs. So I want to talk a little bit about the FSA programs that support urban farmers. Again, I know Rick mentioned some of these, but really reiterating that FSA has a lot of programs um, and some of them are better suited to our urban producers than our <laughs> than, than others. But we have disaster assistance, conservation programs and safety net programs. And again, while uh, urban farmers are eligible to apply those, there may be restrictions in terms of um, in terms of size of your farm and how you're operating, but this is the type of work that we're currently doing to to really determine what barriers there may be for urban producers to apply these programs and and help along the way. Um, so the main resource that we have right now for urban farmers. Um, his number one engagement and opportunities to be a part of the urban county committee process and also our farm loans again i apologize for any dogs you may hear in the background <laughs> hopefully they'll calm down in a moment um, but we have tons of of loans for for urban farmers if you're eligible to apply to so again i won't talk about them too much but want to just highlight some some ways that they could be used um hold on just a moment here Sorry, everyone. Everyone can understand the the challenges of working from home. So I'm just going to appease the dogs for a moment, and then I will continue along. Okay, there we go. Just sprinkle some treats for them. They were being very good before we started, so I was hoping it would it would continue. Um, but again, in terms of our our loans, Rick gave a great example of how a farmer, a bee farmer, um, could could use some of our loans to grow their programs. Um, but you know, you could think about the ways these loans could be used to expand your farm business and help help you grow. Um, they could be used to build hydroponic systems, conduct two, construct hoop houses, um, purchase land or other other buildings that can help improve your farm and we also have uh, farm loans for youth um, to engage in you know to gain some capital and get that experience as as they grow in their farming careers too so again thinking of ways that these loans could be used to help you grow your businesses um, there are huge loans but there are also small ones so um, fsa has has these for you um, so again, some kind of key takeaways. We have tons of resources for urban farmers, um, but farm loans are really the way that we're helping you and we're expanding our reach in these in these urban areas and and really hoping to to gather information from farmers about how we can better support urban producers and making sure that um, we reduce as many barriers there are to participating in all of our programs as a whole. Um, and also as as a uh, I'm, all, I'm a national outreach specialist, but I also am our urban agriculture lead. So our role is really to highlight the programs that we have, make it make it easier for urban farmers to apply to our programs and um, build relationships across USDA so that um, all of our employees are aware of the programs we have for urban producers. If an urban farmer comes into any USDA service center or um, county office, even if we don't have the resources for you, we can connect you to someone at USDA who does or even a local partner or community member. So it's really a, our role to make sure that we're supporting you and helping you grow your farm businesses. And speaking of cross agency collaboration, again, it's something that we are really striving to do at USDA. I know there is a lot of information on this slide, but um, if you're able to get creative and um, you have some some support, there are resources across USDA that um, that can be leveraged or partnerships that are happening to help support urban farmers. So, for example, um, if there is a there are trainings that are happening through local and regional food systems efforts at the agriculture marketing service, um, and so those farmers are 
or those stakeholders might be creating trainings for urban producers. Um, it's just really about connecting you to what you need and how USDA can help you grow your business. Um, even connecting to schools through by selling to different school districts, that's an opportunity for you as well. So we're just hoping that as we advance in this initiative, all of our employees know again how FSA can support you, but also how USDA can support you as a whole. So we are developing lots of resources right now. We just revamped our website, farmers.gov forward slash urban. Um, there's a link there so you can learn about the urban county committees and the election process. And um, again, lots of resources for you to, to learn more about how, how we're supporting urban farmers, how to learn more about the federal advisory committee and how to um, engage in our programs. So that is all I have for you today. Um, any questions from the audience? Feel free to unmute yourself as well. That's how you prefer to ask a question. <laughs> 